Mark Tewksbury, the swimmer, uh, tell me, and I know that's a while ago now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already like, wow, that kills me. Who are we yeah, talking about? Excellent. Oh, yeah, that sure, guy. Sure, sure. I remember. So many years I remember. Ago. So uh, let's just kind of rewind for people. Tw 20, 21 national titles? Yes, sir. Yes. Seven world records. Mm -hmm. Three Olympic medals. Yes. So I bring that up because I remember hearing you speak at a farm credit forum in the past, and you made a comment. You said that your athletic career was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> did so I really how, say that? Yeah, you actually did. <laughs> wow. And I'm thinking, seriously, you had seven uh, world records, and how is this a disaster? Yeah, well, not a disaster, but I mean, there, there are people like the Phelps of the world. In my era, kind of Alex Bauman was that guy that okay. could swim everything, and yeah. winning came kind of, not, not easily to him, but he was just meant to swim. And I wasn't one of those people. I really? was somebody that was definitely made to do something and had a lot of determination and inspiration, but was not a natural swimmer. Really had to work for it. So, <laughs> so you you spent all kinds of time. We did four hours a day uh, in training. You got within, I think at one point you said six one hundredths of a second of the world record holder in the backstroke. And then you come to this incredibly uncomfortable time right then saying, what I'm doing is not working. Mm -hmm. I'm going, seriously, you get that close and what you're doing is not working? Well, yeah, but I came to that conclusion after he dropped 1.2 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so that was ah, my mistake. That changes things. Yeah, okay. I, I made the mistake of thinking everything was working perfectly and just kept doing what I was doing. And while I was doing that, my competition went and reconfigured every aspect of our business and had a massive breakthrough. So that's when I kind of had to go, oh boy, I have to really rethink how I'm doing things. And even what's possible for the, the event that I was doing, which was the 100 meter backstroke. Yeah. But honestly, I mean, the courage that it must have taken after all those years to finally get to a point going, um, all my effort notwithstanding, I gotta do this differently. Um, how did you actually get up the next day and say, okay, I'm willing to go from here to... Well, I mean, you know, old cliche, but either you change or the world changes for you, right. you know, and, and that was it. So I found myself in that place where the world had changed, and if I wanted to be a part of it, I was forced to. But I'm a huge proponent of, of evolution. I think it's a, a great trait to have as a human being, to keep raising the bar on yourself and really try to, to build off the momentum or learn from mistakes, whatever it might be, but yeah. to keep expectations pretty high, not to get too complacent and settled into the way things are. So this is a quote from you from a little while ago, and I just get you to expand on it. You said, as I had gotten better as an athlete, I asked myself the hard questions less. I showed up every day at the pool. I did the work assuming I was being my best simply by being there. Mm -hmm. What's that about? Well, I mean, it's what happens. I think it's, it's it, it, there's the balance of not fixing something if it isn't broken. And at the same time, being able to sort of look ahead enough to know that if I keep tracking this way, it's not going to last forever. And that's sort of a delicate balance of those two ends of the same equation. So I think that for me, you know, there was a time when I was hungry, especially when you first make a national team or yeah. maybe in, in, from a farming perspective, you know, you, you first take over a business or you first take on a new product or something yeah. that keeps you kind of on, on your edge and on your toes and trying to find the best way forward. And then you find it, and I think it's natural to kind of stop demanding so much of yourself on a daily basis and just kind of get into the routine okay. of doing what you do well. Unfortunately, if we get too stuck in that, we can fall into that place of coasting or complacency mm -hmm. and, and really let things fall. So, you know, I'm, I'm aware you don't have to constantly change everything, and it's, it's tough work. Yeah. Self-reflection, uh, looking at the external environment, figuring out where the gaps are, you know, that takes time and it takes a, a lot of thinking. And in day-to-day -day life, often we wake up 6 a.m. or whatever it might yeah. be and, and plop into bed at whatever time it is and don't have that luxury to stop and really reflect. Mm -hmm. So when the world passed me by, it was a big wake-up call. Wow. It, it forced me to go back some, to some of those more fundamental questions for a while. Hmm. Let me ask you this question about, well, I, a lot of, you mentioned farming, so a lot of family businesses in this country, obviously by the nature of the name, you have people working together that are blood, but they don't necessarily get along very well, they don't always necessarily like each other, and they don't necessarily perform very well together. 
I don't think that's limited just to blood relatives. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I get your point. Well, and I guess that's where I'm going with this. You had mentioned in the past that, that Victor Davis, something about Victor Davis brought together four guys that, I think the words you used when I heard you speak the last time, four guys that kind of hated each other. <laughs> yeah. So, but tell me, though, about Victor Davis or about whatever that leadership quality was, because family businesses have this problem where you bring people together that don't necessarily get along, but you guys were able to pull off a bronze medal with that. Yeah, well, it's tough. Um, it was actually, believe it or not, a silver, which was, was even more of a miracle because we weren't wow. really supposed to win a medal at all. But, you know, again, sometimes circumstance forces things to happen. So I think that if you're in a family and all the egos are clashing and you're kind of all in your silos and no one's cooperating or sharing information, there comes a point where it's not going to work unless something changes. And that's really what we found at the last day of the Olympics that we were at. You know, all of us individually had huge egos and wanted to win medals and be the star of the team. Sure. And it didn't happen for any of us. So we kind of were in a place where egos were maybe a little bit wounded. And it was the right moment for somebody to step up with an idea that people could rally around. And that's what Victor was able to do. What did he say? I mean, well, he basically just said, you know, let's stop fighting each other and imploding and what, happen, what would happen if we worked together. And then he laid it out. He said, you know, I don't think anybody in the world can beat us except for the U.S. And when he put it like that, it sort of made everybody sort of go, wow, like we have a chance at a medal here. Are we really going to miss this opportunity or are we going to be will, willing to go there with Victor and, and give what we have? A quote that you made one time, and just get you to explain it. You say that it's important for leaders to embrace contradictions. Mm -hmm. A big part of leadership is accepting the, par the nature of paradox. Where did that come from? Well, I mean, it's one of my favorite traits and something I actually speak all the time to Olympic teams about. When I spoke to the team right before they walked into the mm -hmm. Vancouver 2010 opening ceremony, yeah. we were dealing with a huge embrace contradiction situation. We were getting the team together. I'm in a leadership position to speak to them. I had a very serious motivational talk all ready to go about the country's watching you and yeah. this is your time and all exciting. And then a Georgian loser was killed in the track. Yeah. We start the pep rally with a moment of silence. So talk about the nature yeah. of paradox, wow. right? Like yeah. how are those two things coinciding? But they did on that day, unfortunately. Yeah. And I had to contradict myself and take all that I was going to say and that wasn't what was required in that moment. That oh. team needed levity. They needed to laugh. They needed to change the mood of that heaviness. And I think that's what I mean by embrace contradictions. Is as, as a leader, you may think you know the way forward. And you may state very clearly, this is what we're going to do. And I think that unfortunately, some people get so caught up in that that they're afraid to contradict what they might have said, even if contradicting yourself is the best thing for that situation to move forward. Hmm. So it's, it's not to be afraid of that, to embrace that life is this incredible, it's not black or white, yeah. it's black and white and everything in between. And if you can tap into that, I think that you're going to be a much greater leader. Always a pleasure, always inspirational. Thanks for chatting with us. Thanks, Kevin.